If you're creating an instrument that is just one sound across the whole keyboard or one instrument type across the whole keyboard, then you're probably okay with the default contact keyboard color. That's this one just down here at the bottom of the window. But if you have an instrument that has maybe some percussion at the bottom, maybe some pads in the middle, and then a lead sound at the top split up across the keyboard, you might want to color that keyboard different sections to give your user an idea of where those sounds are. Thankfully, it's actually really easy in contact scripting to do this, and I'm even going to show you how to do it across multiple keys in multiple different sections as quickly as possible. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New and another contact tutorial scripting session. Today is a very quick session to take a look at how to color the keys at the bottom of the virtual keyboard on the screen in contact. This is a really common thing that you see done inside of even professional contact libraries to help separate the different sections of the keyboard that might have different sounds or different loop patterns or different percussion types or even key switches as well. We're going to take a look, yes, at how to color the key, but also how to find the name of the key that you want to color and how to create a loop function that will color a bunch of keys together. So let's dive straight in. So I've just created a very simple script at the moment and I'm just going to copy this across to my contact. In here, I'm just gonna double click, create a new instrument and I'm just gonna paste that into my script editor. So I have my script started and that's just created a simple no buttons or anything type interface at the moment, but we're interested in coloring the keys down the bottom here. Now by default, when you drop in a sample, it colors the keys a sort of blue color. If I go into my instrument, into my mapping editor, I'll hide my script editor for a moment and I'm just going to bring across a simple sample from here. I'm just gonna drop it onto C3, onto that single note. When I do that, we can see that the color actually changes there, indicating that there's a sample here. And if I give it a click, we can play that sample. Of course, if I wanted to then spread that sample out, I could grab it on either end and stretch it out over some new keys. And there we have more of the sample filling up, more of the color filling up. Very simple, one sample dragged across the whole thing. And this wouldn't matter whether it's individual samples, but basically whenever there's a sample associated with a key and you can play that key and play a sample, it will change color. Now, if you wanna change that color, the first thing you actually need to do is know what note that is actually being played. That might sound like a simple thing, like, oh, it's the C1 key, but that's not how contact knows its notes. Contact numbers all the notes from zero to 127, and that number is associated with that key. For example, C3, is is the key 60. Now, if you want to know what number that key is that you want to color, you can actually use a contact script to give you this by messaging out the note name. Let me show you. So going back to our script here, I'm going to use an on note callback. Now, this one is basically saying when I press a note, run this script. So any note on my keyboard will trigger this on note callback. So basically what I want is just when I press the note, any note is going to tell me what that note number is. So we can just use a simple message command to do that. If I type in here message, open up my brackets, and in here I want to use a variable called event note. If I then copy this across, replace my script here, hit apply, and then when I play a note, look at the message bar down here. It's coming up with a new note number every time I press the key. So let me go down on my keyboard and I'm actually going to play the low C0 key. And that's coming up with a note named number 24. And actually that's a really cool sample. I think I might do something with that key later on. But anyway, moving on for now. Now let's use that number 24 and color it. Now I'm gonna come up to the on init command and I'm gonna give myself a bit of space and I need to pop it into the on init section because I want this to happen as soon as the instrument initializes, as soon as it loads up. And I'm actually gonna use a very simple command. It's actually one designed for it. It's set underscore key underscore color and that's the american spelling of color of course inside here you can see two parameters the parameter note number of course we now know is 24 and the key color is a variable again from contact so if i put in here key underscore color you can start to see they all come up in this sublime extension which is fantastic and uh, let's just go find i don't know red 
Let's copy the script over again, and we can see that one's turned to a red there. This is very common to see red keys when you're dealing with key switches, for example, and they might actually be a little bit lower down. But what about, say, percussion loops, where an entire section might be loops or individual one hits that are at the bottom of another synthesized sound? Let's see how we do that really quickly and really easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump back into my mapping editor, and I'm going to give myself some space to work with here. I'm going to say everything up to just before C1 is going to be our percussion loop. So C0 is our key switch, that's our red key, and everything in between that's now blank because we've moved the sample, that's going to be what we want to color. Basically from D through to this B here. A while loop is the best thing to use here. And you have seen this before when I've shown you how to do ADSR controls and that sort of stuff. So check out those videos if you've missed those. But basically what a while loop does is you give it a condition and you let it step through a number of series until that condition is met. Basically, I'm going to say start on one key, color it, then move to the next key and keep doing that until you reach the top key. That's what I want my while loop to do. And instead of having to write, you know, 20 odd commands for set key color and putting in each individual number, I'm going to just rely on a while loop to do that for me, which means less code, less typing. Now, the first thing we want to know is what are these two keys? What are their numbers? So I'm going to come across to contact and I'm going to watch my message number down here. I'm going to play the D that's down here. I'm going to just click on that one. It's a 26. And this B up here is 35. 26 and 35. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my code and at the top of the script here, I'm going to create some constants. So I'm going to hit declare and I'm actually going to type const, which means it's a constant. All that's different here is that the constant is something that can't be changed. It's the same type of thing as a variable, but a variable can be changed later on in the script. You can update the number in an integer variable, for example. A constant is fixed. A little naming convention with this as well is that we use all caps in order to, to, to kind of show that something is a constant. And that's actually why that key color red is actually an integer constant. If you put this into a message command, you'd see a number turn up a fixed number applied. So we're basically making our own constants. I'm going to use a constant called key start. That's something I'm just creating my own name. And I'm going to apply to it the value of 26. And then I'm going to do the same below. And on this time, I'm going to call it key underscore end and assign it the value of 35. That's given me two constants that have my start key and my end key for my loop. And I'm going to use those in this loop section. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to declare a counter because as we know, we often need to use counters in while loops. That way we can track what stage we're actually up to and use that as a condition for whether the while loop will keep going or end at a certain point. For this, I'm just going to declare a variable. So I don't use the constant there. I just declare and I'm just going to use dollar symbol i. And that literally is a very common sort of thing that you find in a lot of coding and scripting conventions is to just use, you know, I as a variable that's being used as a counter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come further below into my on init because we still want this to happen as soon as the instrument initializes. But we're now going to create a while loop. First of all, I'm going to set my counter at a starting point. I'm going to put my variable in there and I'm going to assign it the value of my key start. By doing this, I am setting the initial point that the while loop will kick in. And you'll see that more in effect in a moment. Now I'm going to come down and create my while loop under here. So my while is going to need to be there. My end while is going to need to be there, of course. Now the while is going to need a condition. So I'm going to open up my brackets and say, while this is happening and this is not met, keep doing it. And as soon as this is met, stop doing it. And I'm going to use my counter here. So I'm going to say my counter needs to be less than or equal to my end note. So my key underscore end. This is why we set the counter to the key start. What we're going to do is we're going to start at that key and the while loop is going to keep going until it equals the key end. And at that point, it will stop the code, it will stop the loop. Inside the while loop itself, then we're going to use a similar sort of command as here. So I'm actually just going to copy this one here, paste it in. But instead of putting in a fixed number, I'm going to put in my counter. So my counter starts at key start, which means it's going to set the key color of that key. And let's change it to say yellow. And it's going to set that key color to yellow. Then what I want, and this is very important, I need to increment my variable to the next key. So it will set the key color for the key start and then it's going to plus one. 
which means it's going to do the next key. And then the while loop will go along again and it will set the key to that new key. And then it'll add another number and it'll start again and it'll keep going until this is more than key end. It's important here that I've used a less than and equal to. If I'd used just a less than, as soon as the variable would equal the key end, it would end the while loop, which means that that final key wouldn't get colored. So I need to make sure it's less than or equal to, so it will color that last one. And then the next time when, it, when the incremented counter gets above key end, it is not going to run that loop because it is now not less than or equal to it is more than, and it will stop the while loop. Hope that makes sense. Now that we've got that code, let's copy it in and see if it works. So let's paste it in here. And look at that. We've got our key colors working. So there we go. A very easy way to color code all of your keys for your different sections and to do it in as few steps as possible with the least code as possible. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this has helped you out a little bit. And of course, if you are looking for a lot more contact knowledge, this is a great channel to be a part of. So why don't you consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of the next tutorials we've got coming. Otherwise though, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will catch you in the next one.